You ever had one of those micro farms for producing wheat or an automatic tree farm or just a large field of crops that you need to constantly replant in your early game world and you're constantly running out of bone meal because you don't yet have that skeleton spawner that saves the day for you or you haven't yet come to grip with just digging a 16 by 16 hole down to bedrock to build your huge um, you know mob grinder whatever well in 1.14 that is no longer an issue because you can construct a serotic composter bone meal farm and uh, this thing is pretty neat it's, it's really straightforward you just pile up a bunch of serotic um, what's it called? A bunch of serotics sugarcane farms. Like this is eight sugarcane farms for two composters right here, which you can, you know, uh, connect directly to a chest. And there you have it. You are going to be producing one stack every six minutes of this farm running. I'm going to just turn it on for you to see. Uh, this is less laggy with Optifine, I have to confess. So if you can get the 1.14.4 Optifine, that's going to be. Uh, better for you but you can see that uh, sugarcane is being produced and it's being dispensed right into these two composters and every so often a piece of bone meal is going to be dropped into the chest right here so now you can let's say afk overnight just you know leave your computer running just go to bed and wake up the next day with a lot of bone meal so why don't we just go right ahead and tell you how to build this thing so my name is Shadow C and in this Minecraft 1.14 tutorial, I think it's 1.14.4 which actually works on, I'm going to be telling you how to build this unlimited bone meal farm based on serotic sugarcane farms. But before you do so, yes it's been a long time since my last video but I'm still here, I'm sorry I had some in real life stuff to take care of, I'm going to keep uploading that really good content to this channel. So. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon f so that you get notifications when new tutorials uh, arrive. Also, I do streams. I don't really have a schedule yet, but check my Twitter for when I'm going to do some streaming, maybe in my Let's Play 1.14 world for which new episodes are coming. I promise you I'm working on one. And also the Protex server, which is a 125,000 days server of which I'm a proud member of off 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 i said off like a thousand times well it doesn't matter i i know how to speak english don't worry uh, but yeah from time to time i'm gonna be streaming from there so don't miss that just subscribe follow follow and follow all right so let's continue with our terrible english into explaining how to build this serotic uh, sugarcane farms that are going to be using for my bone meal farm right here uh, this is something that you've seen a couple of times with my furnace uh, smelters over there uh, if you haven't, please check into the information bubble. You're gonna see a link to my f super furnace melter with the serotic bamboo farms. It's really awesome. You gotta go check those. But the concept of the serotic farms has been here for quite a while. It's been developed originally by uh, people like Techman88 and Toast Redstone. You're gonna find links in the description to the videos where they explain it. And it's been adapted to the 1.14 versions by Il Mango. So this is a slightly different concept in here. Also, uh, Ixuma Boys in his Hermitcraft Season 6 uh, videos when he was building his Super Smelter uh, did some really cool modifications, namely this observer right here that we're going to... I'm going to go to take you through step-by-step -step process on how to build this in a second. So we're gonna start right here with some building block. I'm gonna do... I don't know, maybe, maybe about here. So I'm gonna do two blocks up. I think it is. Maybe three, just for good measure. And then we're going to place two grass blocks next to one another. And then sticky piston right to next to this block. And then another sticky piston one block away because this grass block is going to be zero ticking, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And then I'm going to create this doesn't need grass. This can be done with concrete. I'm going to create a pocket. Okay, so basically you want to have this structure, you, this, these two blocks over here, uh, this piston pushing that way and the other piston pushing the other way and the water block in the front. Uh, so now around here I'm going to pull another concrete block, torch, torch, uh, then two blocks behind the torch with some rest on dust and then block over here. Don't worry about that, we're going to fix it later. 
and then you put a regular piston on top and bottom there you go and then I need another block here and then another pair of regular pistons right here so this is a Suyotic farm working if we want to disable it you gotta remove one of these blocks over here so this one is going to be oh man right there yeah I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> shaky right now with the Minecraft anyway so we are going to place our sticky piston right here and this is going to be our activation mechanism right here all right so this is pretty straightforward so we can put uh, the sugar cane right here and if we activate the farm it's going to be zero ticking and growing every so often right and when it grows you want to break it and toss it into some form of collection system right here so we're gonna turn it off and continue with the top part so the top part is really easy uh, we need a temporary block right here and to put a hopper this is what every sugarcane is going to be broken onto and then we're gonna have a collection system right there and then so in the back of the farm I'm gonna place a block right here and a regular piston right here I think it's here and then you know an observer the only block that I haven't grabbed and um, probably the most expensive block that you're gonna need for this farm so far so I'm gonna just put an observer facing upwards right here and then we can just cover this up with some structural blocks this is needed for the last part I like seeing the sugarcane being broken into the hopper that's a interesting site so that's our farm all completed so the next step is a collection system and again this is the same mechanism as we have for the super smelter so I'm gonna just repeat it for you we put a dropper right here and then a hopper facing into the dropper and another hopper facing into this hopper and it's really good practice to just try the farm and make sure that you get actually some sugarcane dispensed all the way into this dropper that's a good sign so we're gonna turn it off and now I am going to build a hopper clock quite straightforward actually so this is the structural blocks that you need and I'm gonna grab quickly grab the rest of components so you need a comparator right here to take to measure that there's something in the dropper a repeater to strengthen the signal and then oops I missed one and then some rest on dust all the way back to turn this uh, comparator clock into an actual dispenser clock now you can see that as items get uh, created in this farm they are going to be automatically dispensed by the dropper now the next thing we need to do is repeat this by eight times and make sure you have space here for a water stream where all of our sugarcane are going to be transported all right, so now that I have the eight sugarcane serotic farms in order, I'm going to work on a system to tie them all up together. And this, again, is the same thing that I have been doing in my previous videos. So if you want to check them out, they're really useful for super smelter so that you don't need to take care of the fuel ever again anymore. But basically, we're building a rest online through the four serotic farms right here. Uh, we're going to do a repeater placement up to this point I need another block here and then we're gonna work with the rest on dust all up to the end so there you go and rest on dust right here and then we're gonna have them meet in the center somewhere so actually actually I'm going to do it through the floor because there's a water stream that has to come through the middle so that's our stair system and then you know reston comes through the center of the thing and it's going to be just enough to power both set of machine if it's not enough you have you know, like a bigger farm you're gonna make uh, you have to deal with the fact that reston signal might not reach the first repeater once you reach this first repeater you're fine but Let's see, if I power this up, yeah, they're all working at the same time and, and you can see the sugarcane falling to the ground. So that's a partial success. We have all of the farms working and powering on at the same place, at the same time, sorry. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is work on the water line. So stuff needs to drop from these droppers and this needs to be sealed. Something like this. So that we don't get spillage onto like the other side of the of the thing. And I'm gonna work on a water current starting probably right from here. I'm gonna seal this just in case we don't have any block spillage around. And I'm gonna extend this line all the way to the front of the farm, like so. I'm gonna have it uh, right past the reston right here so that we don't have any trouble like setting this thing up. I think this is uh, good enough, or maybe not, maybe here is, is good, because we're gonna have this turning to the side in a second. Now back to these uh, little devices right here. I like to put glass all surrounding the droppers. That might not be necessary, but you go ahead and, you know, ch check out um, what you think is needed and, you know, how, how much stuff... Oops, I accidentally changed that thing. But how much do you want to enclose your, your dropper currents? The reason for doing this is that you don't want anything falling. Uh, you don't want to lose any of the items that this farm can produce. Because each and every one of these is very important for a farm production. And we're missing a block right here. Ah, we're missing all the blocks. All right, now that I fixed all of the clocks that had been accidentally broken, we have some sugarcane right here. This is gonna come in handy because I'm gonna be working on the actual water stream. So I'm gonna uh, slight hole in here and water source. So basically you need to watch, and I think I lost my bucket. Oh no, it's here. So let's grab some packed ice. So basically you need to check when this uh, guy stopped and then just remove this block over here, put some packed ice and then look for a slab. I like the uh, smooth sandstone slab right now <laughs> for my build. So we're gonna put a slab right here. Continue the water stream onwards. So this one. Okay, we can do it right here and slap. Just make sure you don't accidentally put a slap right here in the front of the dropper. That, If you do that, you're gonna lose every single item that comes out of the dropper. So you don't wanna do that. If that happens, then you just push the, the ice and the slap one block, you know, farther back. That's that way you're gonna have that problem solved. So this is where the water stream ends and I think this is where I'm going to end my uh, stream right here and the next thing we need to do is uh, figure out how we are going to turn this all right so we need to make this turn which means that i probably need more water than this water uh current reaches so i'm gonna just break it up here careful without you know breaking any of the redstone down there i'm gonna put a slab and then i'm gonna work with a, a another water source over there so i'm gonna continue with my current right here and this is where I'm gonna do the trick so a couple of uh, ice packed ice blocks some chests and now you're gonna set one chest here facing my way and another chest here facing the opposite way what this is going to achieve is that the items are going to collide with the block right here they're going to turn and go that way and when they reach the chest they're going to go just one pixel over to the next block. So without uh, stopping, they're going to be able to drop on hoppers that I need to put right here. But let, let me first finish my stream. Yeah, that would be about enough, I think. I think I'm doing this right, I, I think. So just don't, don't get me, this could fail. So yeah, we're gonna put a two composters, one next to one another, and then hopper facing into the composter. So you shift click the hoppers, and then you need to grab walls. Any type of wall will do. I'm gonna do the sandstone wall because I don't know, I just feel like it. So one wall here, another wall, oops, right here, and then just make sure you, this is close. I think this is, this is okay. You don't need that block over there, but just in case, I'm gonna put the final water source block right here. And, and as you can see, items are, allegedly going to be able to flow 
into the composter so we're gonna test that we have some items right here we could just turn the farm on you know either is fine but I'm just gonna drop some some of these guys into the water stream somewhere over here and we'll we'll check what happens so they they go right into the composters and both composters you know get uh, filled now you need 14 items in a to create one single block of bone meal in the composter so these have 50% chance to be changed into the composter stuff I don't I don't remember the name right now and so when you get 14 so when you get seven layers of compost you're gonna get the bone meal piece out of it so now the last thing you need to do is just build yourself some storage system to gather your stuff now it can be any sort of of storage doesn't need to be just this double chest that i'm doing right here but this will get this sort of fast and as you can see i already have some bone meal being generated in the farm which is amazing now the next thing you need to do is just maybe direct this thing over here so let's let's fancy this up a little bit so we can do it right like so and we can show the composter, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. That that probably looks okay. Right there. There you go. We have some sort of a user facing wall right here in the front of the farm. This can be any sort of building that you decide to, to do. And then I'm going to, I don't know, get this uh, lever up in here and try. I'm going to try with Reston for now, but this could not work. But it does. So you see, it's close enough to reach both of the sides of the farm. So now you're ready to AFK in here. And as I said, you're gonna get one stack of bone meal every six minutes in average. So if you AFK overnight, you probably can get a decent amount of stacks of bone meal, like probably, I don't know. Let me, let me do the math quickly for you. So in five hours, a little extra, five hours and a half actually, you're gonna get one full double chest of bone meal. Now, uh, I know this is not a crazy amount. You can maybe duplicate this thing, you know, put it side by side and just have them working together to get like two double chests in the same amount of time. I think this is enough for early game where you don't have those huge mob grinders where you don't have that, you, you, you haven't yet found that skeleton spawner so you don't have a lot of bone meal in your hands. And so this is a cool, cool little way of spending a few hours. So every time when you end your Minecraft session, you can just go to bed, leave your computer open, and by the next morning have a full double chest of bone meal. So I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, if you do, leave a like, comment, or subscribe to my channel for some more Minecraft. As I said before, I have more 1.14 tutorials coming. A really nice Let's Play Survival Series and of course remember I stream from time to time check my Twitter feed for when I do so or you can just follow me on Twitch and get the notifications when I go online but yeah and oh of also the Protect server really really interesting server I'm gonna be working on my base next over there so that's that's really cool anyways thank you for watching see you later and goodbye